Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tuvas, and I'm here today to bring you guys a tutorial video for Space Engineers. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make Nemo, the miner. Nemo is a small mining ship that is both easy to make and very efficient at mining. Yes, he is a flying-based mining ship. Nemo's ability to fly makes traversing the land much easier. However, this is at the cost of fuel. You'll find yourself frequently flying back to base for a recharge. However, with that being said, bouncing between ore sites will be a lot faster thanks to Nemo's flying being coupled with an ore detector. You will easily be able to search for and identify valuable resources, such as uranium. Not only that, but since Nemo is a flying ship, well, <laughs> we can go straight for it. When it's time to head back to base after a great pull, please bear in mind that your fuel will be burned a lot faster when fully loaded. Now without further ado, it's time to show you all how to make Nemo. Alright guys, so to get started, let's go ahead and move over to a station that we place in the ground. As you should with any small build of any small ship, you should always start off with a station that is planted into the planet surface. So from here, we're going to want to go ahead and select new small ship from your G menu and then orient it so that it faces your desired direction. In my case, I want it to face more or less forward. Something about there. All right. So next, we're going to make sure you want to grab your standard cockpit, but not the fighter cockpit, but the standard one. Then place that on top of the landing gear. Then on the back of this, you're going to want to start putting your maneuvering components. So you're going to want to take your gyroscope, place one here and place another here. So they are on opposite corners of each other. And next you're going to want to select a antenna, place that so that the center of the antenna is at the center bottom of the cockpit and take an ore detector and make sure it's the same, but on the top side and facing to the right. And next you're going to want to select a small conveyor block and place them, place uh, three of those all along the center row, just like that. Then once you get this finished, or what you're going to want to do next is take a medium block, or sorry, a medium sized cargo container, and make sure that you rotate it so that the large conveyor ports that is currently on the left is actually on the top and bottom side. So if you were to look under, you can actually see it underneath, and you're just going to trust me. There's one on on the top. So make sure you line this up with the center, uh, center conveyor port and go ahead and place it there. And next you're going to want to take your small conveyor tube and place it on both sides of these small conveyor ports, just like that. Then you're going to want to take the curved version, the curved small tube, place that on the end of those. And next you're going to, want to take your drills and place them vertically on I, on each side of the uh, of the cockpit just like so what this means is that it will be connected to the back of the conveyor block or the back of the drill ship where there is a small conveyor port right there then after this what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your large air, uh, large atmospheric thrusters and place them vertically on the side of the cargo container at about uh, mid height so it's lined up like that do the same on the other side just like so then take one more and place it directly on the back just like that and next go ahead and take your batteries place one vertically like this do the same on the other side and then just so you can hop onto the top of your ship go ahead and take a light armor slope and put it next to it so you can run up here and then just hop over on top. This will allow you to place blocks on the top of the, of the uh, ship. So here you're going to want to take a connector and place it on top of the medium cargo container. Then you're going to want to take a battery and place this on top of the cockpit. Now how you should orient this is so that you can still see the energy bars at the front of your, uh, at the front of your ship. This way you can see how much energy is left without actually jumping into the cockpit, no matter if you're facing it from the front or the back. You can even see it from the side as well. Now, 
Next, what you're going to need is additional maneuvering thrusters. So what you're going to want to do is take your small aerodynamic, or sorry, small atmospheric thrusters and place them so that they are facing to the side here on top of the small conveyor tubes. At the bottom of the small conveyor tubes, just like this. Do, it, do the same thing on the other side. Flip them around so that they're facing left and right. And then you're going to want to put two more at the very back facing down, just like so. And then next, go ahead and hop back onto the top of your mining ship. Take your drills again. And where are they? There we go. And go and place them on top of your, oops, <laughs> and place them on top of your existing drills so that they connect via the side conveyor ports. Just like that, and do the same on the other side. There we go. Now those are all linked up. Then once you get those in place, go ahead and take your small uh, atmospheric thrusters once more, and place them so that they are vertically, or they're so that they are painted, uh, painted, pointed upwards on the backs of each drill, uh, of each drill. Then next, what you're going to want to do here is you're actually going to want to take your small atmospheric thrusters and place two to at the sides of the landing gear. And when you place it at the sides, you don't want to place it here. You're going to want to place it here and make sure it faces straight forward, just like that. So place two on both sides, just like this. And then right next to those, go ahead and place two, uh, what's called... A forward thrust small small atmospheric thrusters two on each side so two there then two here then right behind this landing gear or sorry right below the it's probably more accurate to say it this way right below the small cargo container you're going to want to put a second connector downward facing connector if i get this lined up right i can barely see it actually you'll probably get a better angle from over here if I can reach. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so now that you have that place, let's go ahead and take a spotlight so you can actually see in the dark and place one right on the conveyor port, the front conveyor port of the connector right there so it can face straight down. And while you're at it, go ahead and take your spotlight and place two more on the front for headlights. And while you're here, go ahead and take your vent and place it on the front of this so that you don't suffocate inside your cockpit. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and go to our air vent and set it to depressurize so that we take in air from the outside. Now that we are inside our cockpit, we're gonna do one more thing, and that is we're going to detach it, raise it up just a tiny bit, head back outside, then go ahead and remove this landing gear, and in its place, make sure you put another small atmospheric thruster facing forward, so this will be for reverse thrust. And what you need to do from here is take another landing gear and place it right in front of the spotlight so that it is evenly, whoops, and that is not even. <laughs> Wanna make sure you get it right in front of it. I guess right there, is that too close? No, yeah, that's perfect. All right, so make sure you put it right at the center in front of the spotlight and then on the bottoms of these batteries, you're going to want to put two more. So put one here underneath the battery closest to the thruster. No, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you how you want to put it here. Just make sure it doesn't get fried by that thruster. Then here, do the same on the other side. And let's go ahead and hop back in and show you what groups to assign. Ah, there we go. Now let's go ahead and place it back on the ground and make it easier to get back into. All right, so now that we pretty much have the build of the miner, let me show you how to actually group up all your bits. So I would highly recommend renaming every single one of these with a tag, something like Aero Miner, or in my case, Nemo. You can do that, or Nemo Miner, I think is what I set it to in my default ship. But basically, what you're going to want to do as far as grouping is concerned, you're going to want to group your batteries together. So let's use Aero Miner in this case and call these batteries. What this will do is allow you to set up a group to set all batteries to recharge to uh, recharge whenever you dock with your base. Next, you're going to want to set all your drills to a group. So arrow, miner, drills. Go 
ahead and save that. That way you can turn them all on and off as a group without having to click. Set your gyroscopes to arrow minor gyros. This will allow you to engage a uh, gyro override so that your ship doesn't shake when you're using the drill. Set your landing gears to a group just because it's always good to have those grouped up all together. Next, you're going to want to select all your thrusters. Actually, let's start off here. Select all thrusters, including the large ones. And set this to arrow, minor, all thrusters. Save that. I did the connectors yet? Oh yeah, I did not do the connectors, so let's actually do that really quick. Arrow, minor, connectors. That is very useful as well for docking. And not to worry about the spotlights. Now, the next thing is up to you. I like to do this because it's a form of not really autopilot, but more like cruise control. It allows you to control how much fuel you use while you're in flight and still get, your, get you to your destination. So what you want to do here is go ahead and search for forward, and that will give you all your thrusters used for forward thrust. And go ahead and group these together called arrow, minor, forward, thrust. Thrusters. Thrusters. Hit save. And that is pretty much all the groups you'll need for this setup. So after you set all those up, go ahead and hit G to assign your toolbar and go to groups. And then go to, actually no, first go to weapons and tools and right click on this so that this drops down to the first slot. Go to groups and grab the group of drills and set that here and set it to toggle block on and off. And then after that, go ahead and grab your gyros. Drag it here and set this to override controls on off. This is what will keep your drills from shaking. And then next, what you're going to want to do is grab all your thrusters, the arrow minor all thrusters. Bring that here and set that to on off. That's useful so that when you're docked, your thrusters don't go, uh, don't, don't try to dampen any motion when it's uh, either on a ship or moving around. All right, basically, so it doesn't try to keep itself from moving. Next, you're going to take your group of batteries, move that to, to uh, number five and set that to recharge. This way, when you are docked with a ship, you can just hit five and it'll start recharging your ship when you decide to leave it. Then next, what you're going to want to put in six and seven is your arrow minor forward thrusters. This is what will allow you to essentially do uh, cruise control like I was saying earlier. Then next, what you can do here is grab your landing gears and set that to switch lock. And then grab your connectors and, such, and set that to switch lock. And there you have it. That is basically the, the mining ship Nemo. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about as far as cruise control, so imagine yourself flying forward, right? While you're flying forward at just a couple meters a second, so I'm going to lightly tap W to get myself going. While I'm doing that, I'm going to hit number six. Now I can stop pressing W. And I will always be moving forward because as long as there's forward thrust, the dampeners on the front will not engage until I stop moving forward with uh, thrust override. So if I hit number seven to stop thrust override, I now stop completely. So if I were to speed up again and hit six, I now engage thrust override for forward momentum. And now I can turn whatever direction I want and I'll keep on going in a forward direction. Now, of course, if you spin all the way around, you're gonna be, have to come to a stop before you can start moving forward again. But at least this way, it will automatically be taken care of for you. But it's best to probably get a get yourself going first and then hit number six and then let it do the rest and if you want to climb upward just keep hitting six to slowly increase your override so that you will keep be able to keep an eye on your current speed and if it starts dropping that's when you want to increase the override now when you start seeing an increase and you want to conserve fuel that's when you should start decreasing the override so that you have as close to if basically you don't want any acceleration or deceleration into your current speed to conserve your fuel as much as possible. So anyways, guys, that is pretty much the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you really liked it and would like to see more of this kind of stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. On the top right, you'll see my playlist of tutorial videos for Besiege, which is a creative style physics game. And on the bottom right, you can find my gameplay playlist for Elite Dangerous, which is technically a space flight sim, but it's really a kind of if you needed to make money and had a really cool spaceship with lasers, what do you do? Kind of game.